The Edmondson Pool in Oskaloosa is set to open this week, with restrictions in place to help protect the health of patrons, staff, and the community. During the June 15th meeting of the Oskaloosa City Council, they decided with a 5-2 vote to open the pool to the public, which is set for June 22nd. Some of those rules include maintaining at least a six-foot distance between patrons, signing in for contact tracing in the event somebody becomes infected with COVID-19. We spoke with Edmondson Pool Manager Gladys Genskow about some of those changes for this year. With what we do out here at the swimming pool, you know, our normal procedures are still the same. There's nothing different with that, with rescues or, you know, our expectations with pool rules in that sense. But um, our biggest rule, you know, out here this year is going to be the social distancing, especially, you know, on the deck for sure. Um, one major rule I think, you know, parents need to be aware of that kids that are 12 and under do need to be accompanied by an adult to come out here. Normally, you know, we have a lower age of about eight years old that we have adhered by. Um, but for this COVID-19, it's, you know, especially important that uh, parents realize it is um, 12 years and under that they need to have a adult with them at all times too. Okay, on Monday the 22nd, you know, our pool hours are from 1 to 7 p.m. and that's seven days a week. Um, so from that first hour from 1 to 2 o'clock p.m., um, the residents that live in the 52577 area, you know, giving them the opportunity to get in here first because we do have a capacity limit of 200 people. So once we meet that capacity of 200 and we keep track of that at the admissions desk and we will shut our doors and as people leave throughout the day, we'll let more in, you know, that want to come in. Um, you know, normally, you know, on hot days, we do have a, you know, crowd that does, you know, start coming, but and that is usually between 1 and 2 o'clock p.m. Um, so I, you know, I anticipate with being having that capacity at 200 that we still will have those people, you know, waiting at our doors as we open and we'll monitor that throughout the day. That's correct. You know, with the, um, the disinfecting and the, those practices, you know, we normally do, you know, a very good job out here of disinfecting anyway. But now that uh, with the COVID-19, we are stepping up that and we're disinfecting a lot more often and trying to, you know, help with that. And with our staffing issues we have out here, we have minimal staff. You know, a lot of our lifeguards have found other, you know, positions through the summer. So, you know, we're short on that area that, and it's just best that, and to try to monitor that, we just needed to get rid of those chairs because those would need to have to be disinfected every time somebody touched those. And our concession tables, we have gotten rid of those too because there's no way that we can take those apart to get six feet apart. So. Um, we have removed all those as well. So we will just be monitoring, you know, our, you know, patrons that are here on their deck all the time and just um, encouraging them to please stay the social distance six feet apart. And otherwise, you know, it should be not a whole lot of different things in here. Uh, we will also ask everybody when they come in that they will need to, um, you know, use the hand sanitizer as they come in, which will be right there at the front entrance. Um, they'll last... Um, to uh, give us their name and phone number and they'll be we'll be writing down the times that they come in just to do that contact tracing and we really hope that they can help us too when they leave you know to let us know again you know that name and I think that might be the most um, difficult one that we'll have to tackle I think this year versus everything else um, I just hope people realize that you know you're coming to a facility that that is very safe you know it's going to be sanitized plus we have instant sanitation here in the swimming pool water anyway so that's something I think people should understand and be comfortable with. I actually have two titles, uh, Development Services Director and Public Works Director. All right, so you kind of were one of those team members that helped look at the possibility of opening the pool. So can you kind of go through what some of that was for you guys this year? Yeah, we, uh, we started by, well, a couple of things. We started um, first looking at safety recommendations from the CDC and also the American Red Cross to see what kind of precautionary measures we would need to, to look into or implement for the facility. And then, uh, you know, as we were working through some of that, um, we were looking around the state to see what other examples there were of what communities were doing in decision making. And, you know, it was changing day by day, but some of the numbers that we were seeing initially is that the majority of, of the, uh, the, st the pool statewide uh, were not reopening, at least their plans at that time. Um, you know, we've seen that change a little bit. I, some of, I think some of the surrounding communities uh, near us have, have recently made an announcement, like Oski did, uh, on reopening. Um, but um, what we were trying to do was, was to get the pool ready as best we could, because it, it takes some work behind the scenes to get, to get the pool ready, maintenance, um, and then present it to the city council with what we thought would be a, a, a reasonable 
but appropriate plan uh, to put in place to, uh, to put those precautionary measures into place to keep our residents safe. All right, and the city council discussed that on Monday night, and uh, they voted, I guess, against the recommendation at the time. So the, um, the community kind of said that they'd like to see this, and, and I know for you guys as the city, there's a large expense that goes with, with providing the pool service. So talk to us about balancing all of that out. Yeah, yeah, it, there is definitely a, a large expense uh, to operating the pool. I think on average, you know, the pool loses uh, about forty thousand dollars per year, and and that's the way it is. That's that's not uh, not um, um, uncommon uh, elsewhere. Um, so there's no doubt it's the pool is supported by by taxes. Um, but I, that was not, um, I guess, my point of view was not the 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 heart of the recommendation. So the discussions were, uh, there's a lot of risk. You know, we could take our best efforts uh, to, to implementing appropriate practices. You know, it will be a challenge for Gladys and her staff to enforce the distancing measures um, and, and to, um, you know, it'll take a lot of work to keep up on cleaning. So there, there's a risk and, and we, we don't want um, we don't want anyone to get sick here at this facility. The CDC recommends right now if someone were to contract COVID-19 that there would be um, um, you know, mandatory, uh, uh, mandatory um, um, seclusion uh, for 14 days. And um, you know, so unfortunately, if, if someone were to contract that here, you know, we would have to close the pool. So there's, there's definitely a risk. We're cognizant of that. Um, but we put together what we think is a good plan you know, to address those concerns. And the social distancing was part of what the council was talking about the other night, too, and, and making sure that some of these rules are really followed or, or we might be forced to close. So can you talk to me a little bit about, about some of that and how, we, how you as a city are wanting to make sure that that is followed so we don't have to close? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to be making announcements, Gladys and her staff, on a routine basis, reminding people to social distance. So we're recommending a minimum six feet. Eight feet is better. We'll have signs around the facility. As she mentioned that we have lines on the pavement uh, at all of the areas where where uh, where people will stand in line or waiting. So at the concession stands, at the uh, the slides and the diving boards, and then also at the entrance, reminding people of what that actual six foot distance is. So you know, it's it's. Um, and we'll also have signs around the facility as well. So, you know, it's something we're going to need to con continue to remind you know, our guests that, hey, this, this is important. This is for your own safety, and uh, please help us out. All right. Well, Sean, we're going to wrap this up. But are there any last thoughts you'd like to share with folks that are going to watch this about, about enjoying and using the pool this summer that maybe I haven't touched upon? Yeah, I, I think uh, I would say I would encourage people to come out you know, enjoy the pool. You know, it's it's a great facility. It was remodeled in, in 2005, and this is not something that every community has. So we're open, come out and take advantage, but we're asking everyone to please do it responsibly and uh, help us out. You know, if, if everyone can help us out by, by following the rules and the guidelines, we'll be able to stay open and have a great season.